how to use a Chattanooga Vector Genesis to do a conventional TENS treatment for pain. You can do TENS when using the Chattanooga Vector Genesis. You need to choose electrotherapy and either asymmetrical biphasic or symmetrical biphasic. I will show you both screens right now. Hit edit. You'll see that these look very similar to each other. So I'm going to hit back and back and I'm going to choose symmetrical biphasic and edit. And they're identical in their setups. So the only difference between symmetrical and asymmetrical biphasic is asymmetrical has a bit of a tapering off like in this picture here in this waveform. Symmetrical is more of boxes, so supposedly symmetrical is less comfortable than asymmetrical. The best thing about TENS is you get a tickle feeling. That's the whole idea. When we do conventional TENS, we're going to be doing a frequency setting of somewhere between 50 and 100. So if you can set the range, perfect. They, that'll be better for them so they won't accommodate. But if you need to pick a number, choose 100. Pulse duration is also called a pulse width. And what it is, is it's the amount of time that the hand is on the hot stove. So it's every time the stim is there, is it there for like 40 microseconds or is it there for 75 microseconds, which would be a lot more intense. Start low and go high and try not to go above that 75. Some machines, they go in increments of 10, so you'll have to go to 80. On the amplitude, which is also known as the intensity, you're going to start from 10 and then go up to 30. And the big thing is you may not have a contraction with conventional TENS. This is not the acupuncture-like or the burst-like. This is the one for get, causing a tingly feeling so that your back pain stops hurting and you don't have to take as much analgesics. It is to ca cause a perceptible paresthesia, or some people say it's a tickle-prickle or a tingly feeling. The pad setup will be to surround the area of pain. And if you're using one pad, then or one channel, like I'm doing right here from channel one, which is the gray lead which I'm using, then I could be like that. But you can set up two channels. You're just going to need to set them up um, separately from each other on this unit. On the little teeny tiny units, you can set them up to go at the same time. So what I just did was a crisscross setup. The crisscross setup is called the interferential, but I don't want you to get confused with the interferential of medium frequency. So surround the area of pain. If this was my wrist, then you'd put pads around the wrist, surrounding it, whatever hurts, the knee, etc. The goal is pain relief without medication. Coming over here to the screen, let's see if I can get no glare. Okay, what we've got here is, see the phase duration is far too long, so you need to go really low on this one. This is the same as the um, pulse duration as well as the um, a width. So you're going to go to a starting point of 40, and please don't go above. My notes say 75, but in this case we're going to go to we can go up to 80. So we'll set at 40 in the beginning. We'll set up a frequency. Honestly, it just doesn't matter. Remember, the frequency range is anywhere between 50 and 100. I like the number 100, so I'm going to use it because frequency will not change the sensation to the patient nor the therapy. So I'm going to go all the way up to 100 and see if I can get there. I've got to hold it down so it doesn't beep a thousand times. And we're getting there. We're at 86. Sorry for that little lag. Okay, better get back. 100 hertz. Okay, hertz, by the way, is the same as cycles per second. Um, the next thing is then there's no burst because we're doing conventional. The frequency modulation is actually a way for you to set how high and low it could go so the person doesn't accommodate. I'm not going to mess with that right now. Um, amplitude modulation, again, is like the vector scan of interferential where it will go up and down in the amplitude so the person kind of can't really locate the, the, the tingling. Don't need to worry about any of those with this one because all you need to set is phase duration to 40 at the beginning. Set a frequency I picked 100 and turn on the milliamps. Now, I'm not allowed to go um, above the the uh, 30 milliamps. So right here it's at 3 milliamps. So I can go pretty high and see how many times I'm turning this dial to get up there. But I don't want to go above 30. Now, there is one stipulation. If, let's say, you set it to 30, whoops, and they don't feel any tinglies and they want to take some more Advil and it's going to give them an ulcer and they're feeling terrible because they, they had knee replacement, then what you want to do is go up here to the phase duration and increase that. 
And they might actually feel it a lot just by increasing by 10 microseconds. Sometimes you can go all the way up to 80 microseconds and increase the intensity above the maximum of 30. But until they get a tickle prickle, that's what you're going for, it's okay. If they get a contraction, even if they can't feel it, do not go above the number where they just get the tickle prickle. And that's as simple as it is to use TENS, which is a really neat thing that we have this unit caught, giving you an option to do TENS. Do a 20 minute TENS treatment, you know, after your treatment or before your treatment, calm that low back down and it's a great drug free way to get rid of pain. And that's it.